Hi everybody, my name is Alan. This is my new wash plant. I call it Micro Blue, kind of named in, in favor of the Gold uh, Rush series that's on Discovery Channel, the little baby blue or, uh, that they used up in the Yukon Territory. This is made out of simple materials used found in the hardware store. The cool thing about this is that I'm able to recover desert placer gold with the use of water instead of the traditional means with a dry washer. Out here in the desert, there's no water, so water is very precious. So the old timers, when they came through here, processed the dirt by using air instead of water. Unfortunately, they only got about 50% uh, recovery. So what we have here behind me is a gold field that has a whole bunch of dry washer tailings, and that's what we're running through here today. The key behind this plant is that it's able to efficiently wash the rocks through this upper trommel here, which we'll show later on how it works. And then all the material that falls to the screen ends up on this sluice box where the gold is concentrated in the sluice. Now the key to this whole operation is actually this trommel down here, which I call a dewatering trommel. Some will call it a filter or strainer. But what it does, it's, it's got a 60 mesh screen in it. So as it rolls around, it takes the dirt tailings off the sluice and actually the water falls through into this collection tub and the waste goes off the end of the tail into the tailings pile. So the water is recycled. The cool thing about this is that I can run about a ton of material through here, dry plasters, using about 100 gallons or less per day instead of using thousands of gallons. So this is the operation we'll see how it works. I'll show you more details, go ahead. So this is the first part of the upper trommel where the dirt is poured into. There's a pipeline here that delivers uh, water at a rate of 3,700 gallons per minute, or excuse me, per hour, okay? And so the dirt and the water is washed and run through here. Then it flows down into this trommel, which is rotating. This is a quarter inch mesh screen, okay? And so all the fine stuff that's quarter inch or smaller falls into the sluice. The coarser material falls off over to here onto this rock pile. Now some of you may be wondering, well, what if you get a nugget that's bigger than a quarter inch? Well, what we do is after we're done processing, we actually scan this with a metal detector because if there's a nugget larger than a quarter inch, the detector will pick it up with no problem. So what we're doing is just working with the large volume of very fine gold that exists here on this property. So this is made of very simple materials. This is a, just, uh, these are five gallon buckets purchased at a local hardware store and chopped up and everything to fill the hopper here, make up the trommel surface. The shaft inside here is a normal steel one inch electrical conduit pipe, okay? The pipe on the outside is schedule 40 one inch that gives it the framework and all that. And then we'll come down here to the business end here the drive unit is actually a 12 volt windshield wiper from a Jeep. And this is what turns the whole thing. So we have it set at a certain rate. And then the pillow block bearings are something used for swamp coolers for squirrel cages. You can see it in here. So therefore, even if the frame flexes and twists and bends, the shaft and the, uh, the swamp cooler bearings keep everything straight. And then the way this thing is uniquely mounted, this has like a little uh, uh, ball joint here. So as this thing spins around, it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of flexure in the, in the, in the system, it'll still continue to spin without loading up the motor. So as we come on down further, this is the sluice. So all the uh, finer material comes down and uh, flows through the sluice box where there's a set of riffles down here. And so these are all the areas where the gold will trap. As the water flows over this, it creates negative pressure. So therefore it creates a suction. So it pulls the gold and heavier materials under these riffles. The finer screen you see here is for finer pieces of gold to get trapped. And then below that is a riffled carpet that helps allow the gold to get trapped and cling without getting washed out. Then the next process, of course, is the dewatering trommel, where all the waste from the sluice flows into here, and basically it's made exactly the same way as the upper trommel, okay? Except it's just got the finer mesh screen, so you can see that. And so as we come around the other side here, you can look into here, it has the same kind of uh, windshield wiper motor, by the way, 12 volt, okay? And you can see all the, uh, you know, the same system and all that. But what's different is this little white tubing in here. It's set up as a corkscrew. I don't know if you can get down in there and see that a little better. But you see the corkscrew pattern. What that does is help auger out the uh, waste tailings out onto the pile. So with that, we're pretty much ready to get started and get going. So we'll go ahead and fire it up and show you how everything all works here. So let me get the system turned on. 
So we'll turn on the pumps first, or we'll turn on the trommels first. And you can see how they're all turning there. And then we'll go ahead and turn the pump on. And you see how the water is getting drawn through the trommel, down onto the sluice, and then all the way down onto the dewatering trommel, and all the water's falling back in the bucket. And if we were running material through here right now, all the material will be spilling out here, which we'll show here shortly once we get going. So what we're doing here is we're just doing our final panning of uh, concentrates from the sluice box. And I'm just panning out the uh, light material, getting down to the black sand where the gold collects. You see the uh, pan starting to turn a little black up here, that's the black sand. Uh, gold is four times heavier than black sand, but they, te they tend to congregate with each other. So we're just gonna slowly cut down the uh, lighter material and get down to the good stuff and as I'm panning here every once in a while you'll see a little bit of gold come up off the back end of this uh, black sand so and that means we've got to finish our cut and get that gold to settle down in the bottom of the pan that's looking real good So now we're just gonna we're just gonna do a little simple swash, swashing of back and forth here. See if we can show up some gold here. I'll just spin the pan around to the camera and uh, see if we get some color out of here. We're slowly cutting the black sand down, getting down to the bottom of the pan, and now we're starting to see hopefully some gold showing up. There's some gold right here. You can see the gold pieces. There's a little tiny nugget. There's several of them starting to show up. See all the gold starting to show up off the black sand. Let me just stop swishing it here for a moment. So we see the pieces of gold lined up through here. There's a nice little piece, more hiding in the black sand. So we'll see if we can cut down, get some more. Here's some more gold showing up. Yeah, there we go. Now mind you, these are tailings that the old miners left behind, and this is what we're digging up. You can now see more gold being spread out through the pan here as we're slowly cutting it okay let's get this big rock out of the way and you see more gold over here and we still got a bunch more gold hanging up here and look at that piece look at that nice little piece of gold right there see that right there and a whole bunch of other finds so this is a pretty good show not too shabby for what the old miners left are. You can see all the gold lined up along the rim here. Pretty good. There's gold in them hills. <laughs> <laughs>